Okay, folks, well, let's have a look at this latest laser level which I've been sent. It is the Kaiwitz brand, model number KT360A. I've mounted it up here on its bracket, which is one of the distinctives about it. It's a different bracket to those that generally seem to come packaged from the other brands that I've had. I've put it here next to the Hewer Par, which is the, the one that I first did a video of. It was the first keenly priced but pretty well made laser level that I discovered, did a video of it, and that led to me then being sent these other ones to review. The Kaiwitz is noticeably more ruggedly built. Now bear in mind that all of these have various different models. This, this particular Kaiwitz one has the three lasers. This Hewer Par one has two, but you can get ones with three and other variations. But again, just using this for the sake of comparison, it is noticeable how much more rugged the components on the Kaiwitz are. So if you expected this to get fairly heavy use, it certainly based on appearances seems like, seems like a pretty good choice. However, I'm a little surprised at the bracket because although it's, it is quite impressively, quite impressively strong, you've got those three magnets at the back there, it's unusual in not having a vertical return on it. These other ones, they have actually possibly not quite as strong magnets as I feel that taking off. But the fact that they're vertically arranged gives more resistance to tipping. So if you imagine putting a bracket on a corner bead, that's how I most often use it. Because I, I generally do interior joinery work and I'm just leveling around a small room. I don't really want to have to get out a metal pole I will just find the nearest edge, which is typically a corner bead. So using this bit of hanging clamp as a close approximation, something narrow, you are going to struggle with this, both because of that bracket design and also because of the beefiness of the laser. It's rugged, it's tough, but it is, it is bigger, bigger and heavier. Just about managed it there, but I'd be a bit wary and I think I'd get probably quite a lot less magnetism off a plasterer's bead. So that's possibly a downside, but it depends how you expect to use it. Now in terms of features, you've got those three lasers. The switching is a little, little bit different to some of the others, which tend to have a pretty similarly designed switch like this. The way it works is if you go to the unlock position, the laser will come on and then you can cycle with this button here, you can cycle through having different ones on and different combinations of them on. The three laser option, now when I first saw it, I thought, well, I don't need that. I most often use a horizontal line, occasionally a vertical one. I didn't see the need for the two vertical ones until somebody pointed out to me that it's a brilliant way to create a plumb line. So with those two vertical ones on, oh, I haven't got them both on, let's see. What you get is a cross on the floor and a cross on the ceiling, which would be perfectly plumb with each other. So again, depending on the sort of work you do, it's worth bearing in mind the different things that this opens up having the three lasers. Now back to the switch there, if you move it to the locked position, by default it's just turned off. If you hold that for three seconds, then you'll turn the laser on and again cycle through the different combinations, but you're in manual mode, so those lasers are then locked. They don't want to try and self-level. So that might be good for setting up a deliberate straight line on an angle, say for laying out a stair. I expect you'll want to know the accuracy and the visibility of the laser. Let's just get it to the horizontal one, put it on actual leveling. It's quite impressively powerful. That does go for all the ones I've tried, to be honest. I'm not seeing any great difference in power. I can see that way over at that bit of red wall there, which is around about 15 meters away. See it fairly clearly. 
I put this uh, pure par one on. Let's see, I think it's pretty comparable. And the Zocorin, which just happens to be the other one that I've got with me. Now, by the way, obviously it's not a great idea to get these in your eyes, although they say it's not really harmful unless it's longer than just a, a flash. But do you know, I think I might just move these away from my eye level. Now that one's flashing there because it wants to self-level, but it was beyond the point at which it could. And that's a feature that they, they all have. I mean, they're, they're pretty similar in how they work generally. So now you see how that wobbles, you know it's trying to self-level, it's not set on manual. So we've got our three lines there, the uh, Kiwi's at the top. Let's have a look at how they look way over at that 15 meter distance. The Kiwi's has a rechargeable battery, which I'll show you in a minute. These are the sort of details that, that do vary between different brands and different models. All these lines are visible to me. None of them are brand new batteries, but they all have a reasonable amount of charge, I think. The lines are, however, at least a quarter inch, a little more than a quarter inch thick. Honestly, I don't know what would be normal for one of the more expensive branded lasers. Seems to me that if you're leveling over this sort of distance, that's probably still gonna be quite a helpful mark. For me, I don't, I don't use them at this kind of distance. I don't use them for this purpose. I'm generally using them for leveling furniture in a room that's not, not often more than about four meters away from where I, I'm putting the level. So all these lasers do the job for me. The Kiwi's does seem to be especially rugged. I'd probably trust that if I dropped that, it's gonna be protected a bit better than the other ones I've looked at. Let's turn these off. You see those work in a very similar way. This one, really you just go to lock to turn it off. Now, the pulse button, which again, they generally all feature um, either just by holding one standard button or having its own button. That pulse feature, if you hold that for three seconds, that will make the beam very rapidly pulse. You can't really see it with your eye, but what that does is it enables it to be de detected by an, an extra tool that is usually sold separately. I think you can sometimes get packages where they come in the case. I didn't get it with this one. I've never actually had one, but I understand that it's a device which you can hold up if you're many meters away and it will detect where the laser line is. So it gives you a little reference point where it's, I think it, it, it beeps, as described here. And then you have a nice little reference point where you can see exactly where that laser is landing. So these things are usable at a pretty good distance. This one comes with a second battery, which is really a bonus. That can be charged either directly into the battery or on the well, same place really, just plug it in, whether it's on the device or on its own. It does come with a UK three pin plug. And like most chargers now, it seems to be the USB connection. Connection at the other end is the, is that called type C? I think that's that most modern type of USB that seems to be standard now. It comes with this target. This is a component that is, is identical in all the different brands that I've seen. And this just increases the visibility of the laser. Again, I don't really use it because I'm not usually using it at such a range. That hole there was just for the cable that comes with it. So this is a well-built well -built laser. Um, the accuracy for all of them, I mean, I haven't done a scientific measurement, but they all seem fine to me. You know, when, when I've tried them leveling units, 
they've enabled me to get units more accurately leveled than just with a spirit level. And that line, I mean, it's maybe, maybe two or three millimeters when you're close up to it. And for me, I find I can just level off the bottom or the top or the middle of it. It doesn't matter to me that it's not like a hairline. It's probably more visible for being a bit thicker. You may have noticed there is the um, symbol showing how much charge there is in the battery. Again, that's something that's a bit of a step up from others that I've seen. And there is this distinctive feature of this type of mount, which by the way, can be mounted like that as well, which is the case for the other mounts. Um, this is a little bit unusual, this laser, in also having the bigger tripod size screw mount in the bottom of it, as well as the smaller standard screw mount. And those are both on the, uh, the base as well. So there's an overview for you. I hope that was enough to give you an insight. People often say to me, so which of these would you recommend? And I just say, well, I think you need to educate yourself on the differences and decide which is best for you. Have a Google of the models. You can find these often on Amazon, sometimes on eBay. Some of them are only on Alibaba and other similar sites, but Google the name, should be able to find them, compare prices. And I hope that was a helpful insight. Thanks for watching.